OK. Now, when I'm looking at this problem, ladies and gentlemen, it does get a little confusing because not only are the figures you know, rotated, reflected, flipped, but my picture doesn't even seem correct, right? You're like, they don't even look the same lengths or anything like that. So how am I going to be able to determine my corresponding parts? So again, our only piece of information that we can, um, that we know is going to be true, that we can go off of, is this statement right here, which says our polygon B, C, D, E is congruent to polygon R, S, T, U. So what does that tell me? Because one thing I asked you, if you get stuck on this problem, label your corresponding parts. All right. So automatically, by looking at this statement, I can tell you my angles. I can say angle B is, course, is congruent to angle R. Forget about what it looks like in the picture. Forget about the picture. Does everybody understand why B is congruent to R? Because that's how we start our congruent statement. Then I could say angle C is congruent to angle S. Right? I'm not even looking at the figure. Because the figure is going to where sometimes get you what you're is going to get you confused. They're going to try to mess with you. They're going to try to make it look like they're not equal. So you don't need to always rely on the photo or thinking. Same thing. Just because it looks like a right angle doesn't mean it's a right angle. Unless you're told it's a right angle, you can you can use that it's a right angle. Angle D is congruent to angle T, and angle E is congruent to angle U. Does that make sense to what I did? I haven't even looked at the pictures. I haven't even looked at the sides. By, by this congruent statement, I know that these angles are congruent to each other. Now, what about the side lengths? You can do the same thing. By looking at these side lengths, I can say that side BC is congruent to side RS. Right? Because the first thing I do is B to C. Then over here, I do R to S. Then I can say C to D is congruent to um, S to T. Then go to D to E is congruent to T to U. And then I can go to E to B is congruent to U to R. Does that make a little bit better sense, Sierra? What I did? All I'm, do you understand? No, that's not even what I was talking about. Oh. The Okay, so let's go back, let's go ahead and label them for what they're equal to, okay? So, so Sierra, Sierra, let me show you. Let's go through this. If we wrote down the corresponding parts, these corresponding parts are based off of this statement, not based off, again, the figure. So let's go and write them in on the figure. Let me show you what they look like on the figure. Angle B is congruent to angle R. So this angle B is congruent to that angle R. So I'll give them one tick mark, meaning they're equal in measure. All right? Angle C is congruent to angle S. Angle C is congruent to angle S. Angle D is congruent to angle um, T. And then angle E is congruent to angle V, or U, I'm sorry. So now you guys can see that each one of those angles are congruent to one another. So what's important, if I want to find out the value of y, I look at this and I say, all right, this angle D is congruent to angle T, right? D is congruent to angle T. Therefore, this angle in measure is equal to that angle's measure. So to find y, I can write 2y minus 31 equals y plus 11. Now I can set up an equation because their values are equal in measure. Now I just simply need to solve for y. So I subtract a y, and I get y minus 31 equals 11. Add 31 on both sides, y equals 42. Okay. Now let's go to the side lengths, because that was everything we needed for the angles. It says that BC is congruent to RS. So B to C, which is right there, is congruent to R to S, which is right here. I'm sorry, B to C is right here. 
So B to C, B to C is congruent to R to S. If they're congruent, that means the measure of their sides are equal. So therefore, now I can say 4W minus 7 is equal to um, 2W plus 3, right? Because those side lengths are congruent. So their, e so their, va so their um, measurement is exactly the same. Now I just solve for W. Subtract 2W, subtract 2W. 2W minus 7 equals 3. Add 7, add 7. 2W equals 10. Divide by 2, divide by 2. W equals 5. Now let's continue on with our side lengths. CD is congruent to ST. So where's CD? CD is right here. CD is congruent to ST. These two sides are equal to each other, but they don't have a variable, so we're not concerned about them. DE is congruent to TU. DE, DE, 1, 2, 3, is congruent to TU. 1, 2, 3. So therefore, we can now write our final equation, which is 3z plus 10 is congruent to z plus 16. That means they're equal in measure. Now let's solve for um, z. So I subtract a z on both sides. 2z plus 10 equals 16. Subtract 10, subtract 10. 2z equals 6. Divide by 2, divide by 2. z equals 3. Okay. Now I've found the measure of each one of these. And if I want to do my last side, EB is congruent to UR. Okay? But now you guys can see by finding my corresponding angles and my corresponding sides, I can now see which side lengths are equal to each other. Therefore, I could set an equation to solve for each variable. Okay? Done.